welcome back to another episode of Corvette as Uh This episode is called Back to Ground Zero Rebel. Now that we have the, uh, the whole smog ordeal past us, uh, I had to drive the Corvette for a little bit, you know, because uh, uh, as soon as I started driving it, I, I realized how fun this car is. Uh, you know, and, and how, how great it handles. I mean, it handles like it's on the rail. Of course, there's been a lot of modifications done to it to get it to handle like that uh, previously, but uh, there is one modification that I didn't uh, do, and that's what we're going to address today as far as the suspension is concerned. Uh, it's got uh, uh, BBP springs and performance springs in it. This is going to complement the performance spring in the rear. Uh, it's going to be a nice BB sway bar, okay? So the sway bar is from Adco, which uh, I already have a uh, sw uh, Adco uh, sway bar in the front. The front's already been done. Uh, I still need to address the rear. But anyway, uh, if not only that, we're going to go ahead and finish. Uh, we run uh, wiring up the uh, fuel pump, kernel fuel pump, and install the fuel management system. So we need to get that out of the way this weekend because next week um, we are dropping the oil pan, tapping in the return line for the supercharger. But today we're going to install the uh, sway bar. I'm going to try to get video uh, underneath there with my iPhone. Unfortunately, the camera that I have uh, is just too big, too bulky to get underneath there and film stuff. So, uh, uh, we'll go ahead and install it and then we'll show you uh, what it looks like installed with the iPhone. Okay, with that being said, uh, let's get to it right after this. Okay, as you remember <coughs> from a previous video, um, the FMU here uh, was simple install. You had a 10 millimeter bolt right. Well, let me let me do a, a close up. You had a 10 millimeter nut here, and you had 13 millimeter here. Okay, let's uh, cut the audio. Uh, just go ahead and follow along and let Mr. Mechanic does w do what he does best. Uh, but I, I want to uh, go over what the fuel management unit actually is and does. Now, the fuel management uh, unit, that's, that's been around for quite some time. Uh, it's for older vehicles like my uh, 1985 Corvette. The newer vehicles have... Uh, uh, Pretty much an onboard computer versus my 85 vet it wasn't really an onboard computer it was more of a module uh, so it, it was pretty basic for its time uh, but I mean they, they did put a lot into the module and it did cover a lot of ground and they did that by a computer chip uh, by flashing a computer chip uh, what they call a prom uh, which the newer vehicles don't have. The, you can uh, alter the uh, ECM on the newer vehicle uh, just by plugging it into uh, it with a computer. And that's how simple that is on the newer car. But on the older cars, like mine, you actually had to pull the chip out of the module and use a EEPROM programmer uh, to flash chip with the data that you needed for the type of application that... Uh, uh, you had going on, which is uh, a little bit more hands-on than your basic computer. So back to the fuel management unit. Uh, the unit uh, is pretty much like a fuel pressure regulator. 
uh, a, a more advanced uh, fuel pressure regulator, which works by boost through a hose that's connected to the FMU and intake, which is sending pressure to the FMU to regulate the amount of fuel it's need, it needs it. Of course, the more pressure, the more fuel. So none of this is going to work unless you have the fuel coming in as hard as the fuel pressure regulator is wanting it to. The stock fuel pump is not going to be enough. That's why you need a high flow fuel pump. And in my application, the high flow, flow fuel pump is external. Now with the high flow fuel pump uh, and the stock fuel pump, uh, together, uh, it will allow for greater amounts of fuel to flow through the engine. Now, there's more to it than just the fuel. You know, you have your electronics, too. But we'll, co we'll cover that when we get ready to install the MSD equipment. That's all there is to it. Now, let's go ahead and get the uh, fuel lines ready. Got to take off the stuff over here. There's only two bolts holding this down here. Uh, pretty much removed all the hoses and then it comes right off uh, except for that hose and then make sure you remove the uh, vacuum line on top of it so they can set out and wait. The thing that we're going to do is there's one bolt holding this one here oh I got the wrench on it uh, and then that should take care of the rest of the emission equipment. Clear in the path so I can get the uh, lines of the. So that should be free to come to me, except for the bottom line one here. And there it is. That's how simple it is. There we go. And these uh, uh, fuel lines, uh, I mean, at, at, at one point, I tried to get right them underneath there, but it was just in the way, uh, the fuel lines were in the way of me uh, connecting a plug. Uh, but anyway, it's just a big battle. Uh, to get these fuel lines in. So uh, for right now, this is the way it's going, and uh, uh, we're pretty much done with that part of it. And as you can see, uh, let's move on to. I, I, I did mock up the bracket, uh, the post, the pro charger bracket, supercharger bracket. Um, the reason being, uh, I'm going to. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is drop the oil, um, oil tank and uh, uh, tap in a return line for the supercharger. So just want to get an get idea of where the line is going to be coming from. Probably going to be coming from right here um, into the supercharger. So it, that's the reason why I mocked up the uh, bracket on there. But it's looking good. <laughs> Okay, guys, there it is. I'll try to give you a, an idea. Anyway, uh, it's all installed pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, there we go. Goes around out to, over to the uh, uh, end links there. Uh, not too bad. Uh, nice thick bar. Anyway. This here, I'm kind of disappointed over here because it was a little tight to get this on uh, from hole to hole. And after further uh, investigating, it looks like uh, right about in here, I don't know if you can see that or not, I'll do it real close up. There you go. Uh, it looks like that was put into a vice grip and shrunk that and squeezed down. Uh, like it was uh, not made for whatever, I don't know. Uh, it, it looks like they tried to squeeze it uh, in more to, uh, for them to fit, but it didn't work. Uh, but the, which is really disappointing because uh, I got this uh, uh, bar at, 
uh, uh, at Corvette Central, you know, and I've never had any issues with Corvette Central, but to me, this might not be a big issue for anybody else, but for me it is, because, uh, you know, I mean, I, I really um, like, uh, I really like keeping my stuff clean, and although you're not going to be able to see that for sure, not from underneath there, it's just the point that uh, um, something like that would uh, occur. I mean, they didn't, I mean, if it was return, I get it, but, you know, uh, they should have uh, looked at the brackets a little bit closer um and say hey you know what we can't sell this as new blah 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 you know and i don't know i didn't notice oh shoot i didn't notice uh that uh i mean the price wasn't bad but i mean you're talking over 200 dollars for one of these bars it's not cheap you know but anyway it, it, it's it's just the point I mean, I mean, it could have, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have sold it as new like that, but uh, they did, and they pretty much lost a customer for it because of it. So, all good. All right. And as you can see, there's my end links. They've been torqued down, and the polyurethane bushings. Uh, this is uh, pretty, this is, this is pretty strong. Uh, like I said, this, this is uh, pretty, pretty simple, easy pieces. Uh, uh, everything's done in that area, so... And as you can see, um, everything's back to normal again. The, um, pump fuel, uh, a fuel line is, uh, this one here. This one used to go to the tank, but now it's going back into the uh, other side of the pump. Um, anyway, so now I'm going to replace uh, this thing here because uh, this time around I kind of tore this up big time. But if you kind of see, you know, this hole here is bigger than this hole there. I'm supposed to get this thing into there. Yeah, right. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heat it up and then see if that works. If not, I'm just going to go ahead and drill it because there's enough rubber there. I took a little persuading, but I uh, uh, had to drill out the, uh, the hole a little bit more than I wanted to. Uh, but that's all right. It, it still came out good. Uh, a little heat, and she went right in. And there it is there. And as you can see... I picked this one up from uh, Full Throttle Corvette. Uh, when it comes to stuff like this, if I can't get OEM, uh, I'd rather deal with a uh, place that uh, strictly Corvettes, you know, because this, this rubber here is really soft, a, a, a lot softer than what I had on there. So, all right, well, that wraps that up. Uh, here's the uh, fuel pump and the wiring as you can see it's uh, uh, going all the way I've ran it to oh, there we go there we go I ran it uh, to the brake line and I tie it, zip tied it uh, to the brake line as you can see uh, right from there right there um of course you notice that uh i have a vpp spring a vbp spring it's a uh, performance spring anyway as you can see i ran it along the brake line zip tied it and ta -da. there we go all the way down uh, the driver's side. And I just need to zip tie this right here. But as you can see, it goes into this uh, hole, which goes directly to the battery. Now, 
The way I uh, hooked it up to the battery, these uh, they're GM side posts. So I got these at Amazon. Um, and I pulled the stock ones out. And as you can see, there's a yellow line right there. That is the fuel pump line. There's a fuse right there. I don't know if you can see that right there. But um, they're, they're great because you can add, you can add on uh, wiring where you couldn't originally. So th there's the original one right there. Uh, the original side post. I popped that out and I put these posts in here that I got from Amazon. Uh, and it makes it really easy to attach more wiring to it, which is great. Uh, before, there was, there was no way I could attach wiring to that. Because just the way these, uh, these covers in here, they kind of um, go inside the battery pulse. But anyway, uh, there you go there. All right, guys. Um, there you go there. Uh, the uh, sway bar is a simple install. Uh, you just got to move the uh, sp uh, spare tire cover uh, out of the way. Uh, once you do that, everything's exposed. Uh, and one thing to remember too is that, uh, that when you're dealing, dealing with any suspension, um, you want the car to be on the ground. Well, of course, there's, there's ways to go around that. What I ended up doing is I put jack stands underneath my uh, uh, wheel hubs on each side and then I dropped it down until the car laid on its uh, butt. So once I did that, I was able to go ahead and torque everything down the specification uh, and uh, it's pretty, you can do the same in the front, that's what I've, I've always done it, you know, uh, that's the way suspension is. Uh, this car is too low, okay, I can't get, there's no way <laughs> I'll be able to get underneath the damn thing. Anyway, uh, this is how I do it, I always throw the jack stands underneath to make sure that the car is uh, uh, at right height where it's supposed to be, then torque everything down. Things are going to be moving a little bit quicker now, um, so stay tuned, and uh, this wraps up episode 13, so until then guys, I appreciate again appreciate you watching the, uh, the channel and uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button until the next episode we'll catch you on the next episode of Corvette Edge